everybody and welcome to my studio. This video is a tutorial of Holly. I've done this little composition here with just three leaves and three berries and I am going to paint this and show you how I would go about painting some Holly. Let's start with the colours I'm using. For the berries my main red is Pearl Red and I also have some Pearl Scarlet for the bits that are closer to the light and a little bit more orange biased and Enfraquinoid Red for the bits that are more in the shadows or underneath the leaves sometimes there's a leaf casting a shadow on top of the berries. Right. Then for the foliage I have Sap Green and with my Sap Green I have mixed a very dark blue called Idenfreen Blue or Idenfrone Blue depending which brand you are using and this makes very very dark green and you can see it's exactly the right green for the holly leaves on the top of them and on the underneath I've done the same mix but I added Hensa Yellow Light and that gives me that more muted and lighter green that I have underneath there and then for the edge of the leaves they have a sort of border which is much lighter. This is just sap green with Hansa Yellow Light in it, no blue at all. Then for the branch I have Burnt Umber in which I mixed Peril and Violet and a bit of the blue, Indian Thrown Blue as well. And that gives me this very dark maroon brown, halfway between brown and purple and that's the right colour for the branch. And now for the shadows, I am mixing my harmonic shadow as usual, which is a set of three primary colours that I am already using in the painting and which together will make a grey. The blue is easy because I only have one blue in the painting that that's in Denfron blue. The yellow is easy as well because I only have one yellow in the painting that's Hansai Yellow Light. The red I have a choice and I've gone for the middle one, I've gone for Pyrrhal Red. Um, Pyrrhal Red, Indian Thrun Blue and Hansa Yellow Light make this very neutral grey. Right, so now we have all our colours mixed, already in the palette. We can start painting the holly, as usual, painting my shadows wet in wet. So I'm going to start with this side. I'm doing a whole leaf on this one because it's underneath and the other leaves are going to cast a shadow. I'm using quite a strong mix of shadow going underneath, just dragging the brush very lightly where the veins are and into the spike there. And that's it for this one. The shadows on the leaves have all dried, so now I'm ready for the shadow on the berries. So again wet in wet. I'm not picking a lot of paint at all from my palette here. I really don't want a lot of shadow on the berries because I don't want to kill that bright red. Now I'm waiting for this to dry and then I'm ready for the next one bit of shadow in the corner here where it turns under towards the back and then leaving this one to dry. Okay that's it for the shadows. Now we're going to leave that to dry thoroughly and I'll come back with the colours. Alright my shadows have dried. And you can see the shadows underneath the berries here, although it's the same mix, are much darker than the shadows on the berries. So same, same mix, but add more water when you want the shadows to be lighter. Now I'm going to start with the underneath leaf again. So this is going to be the sap green with the indanfreen or Indian Throne Blue. So I have mixed a pool of green, quite a big pool of green, to have enough for all my leaves 
to make sure I have the same color. I'm using quite a small brush because I don't want the paint to spread too far and for this reason as well I'm using a synthetic brush because it carries less paint. Now while before this is dried I'm using also a little bit of pure green in the mid-tones here which I'm adding while this is still wet because as you know I like to add a lot of variations in my colors and I don't want my highlights to be completely white here because this leaf is underneath the light will be slightly less strong here okay that's enough for the first wash and now for the last one again leaving a little gap all around and in the center for the vein and going in with my dark green mix making that little gap thinner and thinner as it goes to the tip and that's it for the first wash on the foliage right. I am back for a first wash on the berries and it's important to do some red before you do another layer of green because you want to keep all your colors in balance the green will look completely different once there is some red on there so although I am painting wet in wet and I've put water on all of it I am going to be very careful not to put any paint on the highlight here so this is pure red here and I am adding a little bit of the and fraconoid red over the shadows and just moving a dry brush a clean brush it's not dry it's damp just to smooth the edge of the highlight here and I'm just gonna go in more here with a tiny brush to make sure that the berry the other berry has got a rounded shape here just because I'm painting this one doesn't mean I've got to forget about the shape of the other ones so it's a bit of negative painting and while I'm here I'm adding a bit more colour and I can add a little bit of scarlet as well at the top here And along the edge. Be very careful to reserve that highlight. There we go. That's enough for this one and I need to let this one dry before I do the others because they're all touching each other. So that's it for number one. Okay ready for berry number two. We're gonna go under there starting over the shadow just applying pure water and then with a smaller brush going in with Pyrrhal red and fraquinoid red towards the edge here. Pyrrhal scarlet. Dropping all these colors in the same wet in wet wash so they mix directly on the paper rather than mixing them on the palette. And then tidying up that highlight. I don't want a hard edge on there because if there's a hard edge, it's going to look like a hole in a berry rather than a highlight. This is why I'm painting it wet in wet. To keep a soft edge always. 
Okay, it is now time for another wash on the foliage. It needs to be a bit darker than what it is now. So I'm going to start again with the underneath leaf. But this time I'm going to go with half a leaf instead of the whole one to start showing that line in the middle. So I'm still working wet and wet. And I'm still using the same mix of sap green and Indian throne blue. And I'm still leaving that line here because that's going to be a pale green line which is the margin that you have on the leaves that belongs to the leaf on top of it. And I am hoping for this to be my last wet and wet wash, so I'm really going for it. I'm really adding quite a lot of paint there. When working with a very dark colour like this, you have to pay particular attention to the edges because if your edge isn't neat, it's going to show even more than with a pale subject because it is so dark compared to the white paper. You're going to end up with a bit of a problem if your edge isn't neat enough. But remember, there will also be a pale edge to the margin of the leaves. And a very dark green is really what is going to make your holly look looking like holly. You know, if you don't go dark enough, it's not going to look like holly. Holly leaves are almost black. So you really have to go dark enough to show this. So I'm going to continue working on my half leaves still half a leaf at a time. So like I mentioned on the end of the previous video, I don't usually do a lot of dry brush. Most of my work is done wet and wet, but for several reasons, this holly is gonna get more dry brush than I usually give my paintings. The reasons are that there is a lot of very precise detail, like the veins, I've left the veins blank, but they need to be painted and obviously I can't do that wet in wet because it will spread all over. Another thing is that if you look at the very dark areas, at that point, the paper won't take any more wet in wet because the paint is already very concentrated on that. So if I want, if I want to build a bit more darkness there, I will need to go with dry brush. I also want to sharpen those spikes and that will be with a very fine brush and it will be dry. And I also want to do I don't know if you can see that very well, but you should have some holly in front of you by now. You can see that on the edge of the holly leaves, I've got a very fine line of pale green, the same green as the veins. And again, that has to be done with a dry brush. I also want to build a little bit more color on my berries and I want to add the little bits at the end where the sepals used to be at the end of the fruit. With all of that, tiny brush and dry paint. So first of all I am doing the veins. So I'm using the mix that I had earlier which was the pale green here which is my sap green mixed with the Hansa yellow light. And I'm just painting this, taking that mix straight from the palette and covering the white line that I've left in between. And then there's also a couple of lines, a couple of veins that I've left blank. 
as I did my wet in wet so the, these need to be covered as well and I'm going across the highlights as well the only time I don't really want it to spread is when I'm going right across the highlight like this because if the green spreads there it's going to go into the highlight and that's going to be too much so when I go across the highlight I'm making sure it stays neat and then just adding a little bit of water on top of it to blend it in a little bit but with my pure red I'm just going to add a bit more red intensity really over the mid tones and I really don't need that much and I'm doing this with tiny brush strokes and I'm only doing it where there is already a lot of paint because if I go and do this somewhere where the paint isn't built up already I'm gonna get brush strokes I'm gonna get marks there and I don't want that if I show you what that would do on white paper I would get that kind of marks on my berries and I really don't want that and then I'm going to do the little bits where the sepals were and I am going to use, if you remember I mentioned when I was mixing my colours and I'm mixing burnt umber, Indian frown blue and Perilene Violet to make that very dark colour and this is what I'm going to use so I'm going to start with this one and I'm just really drawing with my brush painting them with a dry brush okay now it's time to go for that little border again with dry brush and a 3-0 and that is just a question of doing a single line all around each leaf easier if you turn your work and you work in a parallel motion try to keep it as regular as you can and the beauty of it is that if you've been over the edge a little bit of your dark green You can just put that into that line and it will fix it. And you know, that doesn't happen very often. Use the tip of your brush to sharpen those spikes. But we will sharpen them further with a darker colour as well because with the pale green, they're not showing enough. And if you look closely at your holly, you will see that most of these prickles are brown on the end. Now using a slightly darker mix, I'm using the mix that I prepared for the underneath of the leaf, which is the sap green in Dantrin Blue, but I, I added some Hansel Yellow Light, so it's not quite as dark as the leaves themselves, but it's darker than the edge. because I need to give this edge a slightly darker line otherwise it just disappears into the background so I'm going around again with that darker green just doing a very very fine line on the edge of that pale green and also sharpening the prickles a lot to give them that lethal look and if you've been harvesting your holly for this tutorial you will know just how lethal they really are and that should inspire you to 
to make them sharp enough. Okay, so next is going to be to tidy up the inside of the prickles here, where the dark the green meets with the pale border. Some of it is a little bit messy. So again, with a 30 brush, this one's not too bad, I'm just going to sharpen it a bit. And it adds a bit more colour as well at the same time. This one's not too good. That's better. So what I did before was tidying up the outside of that border. Now I'm tidying up the inside of that border. Okay, that's it for the dark green in the prickles. All right, I've got one more thing to do and it's to add some brown at the end of some of the prickles. Some of them I've got a little bit of brown, not as dark as my other brown. So I am gonna go for pure burnt umber, not the mix I've done before with the peril and violet and the blue, but just pure burnt umber just going to be adding a bit of colour to the needles. I don't want to go too dark on these two because they are on a dark background and I lifted the edge. If I put brown on these, they are just going to disappear into the dark brown. So I'm going to use a little bit of artistic license on these and I'm not going to add brown to them. Now it's like the border with the green. In some of these my paint is a bit more diluted than some others and I'm going to let that happen to add some natural variation because they're not all the same. Like everything in nature, it varies a lot. And here we go, they're very sharp now. To keep this video a manageable size, I have accelerated, got a few bits and skipped over some of us. All in all, it should give you enough information to paint your holly. But if you prefer paint along videos, that shows the whole process with a lot more explanations, a lot more demonstrations. I have done a paint along video tutorial, which I have listed in my Etsy online shop. And that's one hour and 40 minutes of footage in four different videos. And that shows everything. So I will put a link in the description box below the video. If you are one of my Patreon subscribers, don't buy the Etsy video tutorial because you already have it. I uploaded the four videos on the Patreon site. So the chances are you've already seen it anyway. And while I'm here, thank you so much for your support along this year. I hope you're enjoying what I'm posting on Patreon and thank you for being there. That's a wrap for me on YouTube for 2020. I wish you all a healthy and happy and creative 2021. And I will see you again soon. Happy painting. Bye. Merry Christmas, everyone. Joyeux Noël. I hope to see you soon.